world. Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and computer science professor here with a short screencast about access. In this playlist, we're talking about lookup tables and how great they are for helping us enter consistent data productively. And so we have the job titles table that we created in the previous screencast, and we related it to the employees table in a one-to-many relationship to create this cool drop-down list to enter the job titles quickly and accurately. But what happens if you want to modify that drop-down list? So for example, in the job titles table, I'm going to go into design view and add another field. And how about starting salary? And we'll make that a currency field, of course. And I'm going to save this and look at it in datasheet view and just enter some random numbers here so that we have some data to work with. All right, so we have our starting salary for these different job titles in our job titles table. And the goal here is to add that column to the job title drop-down list in the employees table. To do that, we want to go into design view of the employees table, select the job title field, and look at the lookup properties. And one thing we could do is simply wipe out all of these lookup properties by going to text box and start the lookup wizard again and reestablish that relationship. But that's not really necessary. I'm going to go back to combo box and fine tune this a little bit and look at this row source property. And I see the word select. So I know that's an SQL statement it's selecting the job title field from the job titles table. If I click the build button, I actually can go into query design view and add that starting salary field. Now, the reason job title is listed twice is because here we've listed it and then here the wizard has decided to add it a second time without showing it put an ascending sort on the job title. But we don't need that. We can simplify that a little bit by deleting that third column and adding the uh, ascending sort order here to the job title field. So it's the same thing. It's just simpler here with us manually looking at this query instead of letting the lookup wizard create it. So I'm going to go ahead and save and close this. And now I'm selecting the job titles and the starting salary fields from the job titles table. And then we're doing an ascending sort by the job title. So let's look at that in datasheet view. And now our drop down list still does not show the starting salary. Go back to design view. What we have to do is say there are two columns. So two columns, do we want the column headings? We'll say yes to this just for something different. Let's show that property, how that works. And then column widths. We have columns, but only one column width. Let's do a semicolon to separate the numbers and add a one to that. So I'm adding an inch. Let's see, this 1.55, that's pretty complicated. Let's just go with 1.5 colon one. And then that will make it easy down here for the total width uh, to be 2.5. Another thing that I like to do while I'm digging into these lookup properties is set the list rows number to 99. Now, I don't have 99 different job titles, but if I did, that list would continue to grow up to 99, which basically fills a screen. So by default, I think it's set to 16, which means you just get a tiny little drop down list. And if you have you know, 50 states, you want to see all 50 states, not just the first 16 in your drop down list. So I like to set that to 99 whenever I get a chance on a lookup field. All right, let's save this and look at it in datasheet view again. And now when I click on that drop down list, I have the, the field names, the titles, and the jobs in ascending order on job title with their starting salaries. And so even if I don't want that data in the table, it's nice sometimes to have that additional information when you're picking a value from a drop down list. Thank you.